So Bruce started out um, as on a local volunteer department in central Illinois, um, Williamsville, and um, kind of ornery, kind of, um, you know, just wanted, wanted to do more. And, um, uh, you know, Jen could probably tell you more about, about that in his more recent years, but um, took, took tests, tried to get in, had a friend that lived in Columbia, Missouri. Um, I think that's really the only paid department that he applied to, and, um, and he got in. Um, but the, the Bruce that wasn't the fire department that, um, that I knew more growing up and, um, you know, just, just on her, you can pick on my sisters and, and probably Jen felt that too. You can pick on her, but don't, you know, you leave them alone kind of thing. Um, and I, just very, very loyal to his friends, very loyal to his family, do anything he could, especially for kids. Um, his kids, community kids, 4-H, came up through 4-H and FFA and, um, had a lot of really good stories with the 4-H and, and that, and, um, and I think the, being a firefighter kind of grew out of that, just wanting to help people, wanting to, um, you know, do whatever you could for your community and, and people who couldn't for themselves. Bruce was already on the department when I came on. Um, our department doesn't have a lot of females, um, so probably one of my biggest memories of Bruce is he was definitely kind of the fatherly figure and took me under his wing and um, even though we were equals on the fire ground he always made sure that he protected me um, just even on random calls you could always see he would turn around and he would he would be the gentleman you know he would open the truck door for me he would um, you know, pick up med bags when that was my job. So I would scream at him to let me do my job and he would be the gentleman in trying to take care of me and making sure that I was okay. Um, and Bruce, I think a lot of times is one of those, he either loved you or he hated you. And luckily I was one of the ones that he loved and um, loved giving us a hard time and um, just playing around together. And um, very, very hard worker. Uh, for as long as he was on the department, and he never became one of those guys that just wanted to sit back and do nothing. He was first one in, he'd come out and he'd be the dirtiest guy that was on the fire ground. You know, he's just big in stature and he would be weaseling up, crawling through attics and he, he loved firefighting. He wanted to, he was not a sit back and watch other people do stuff. He was in the trenches and if something needed to be done, he worked the entire time. Um, definitely taught me a lot and I don't know that's kind of one of the biggest things is even though he's gone still feels like he watches over me because that was his his role when when he was here when you walk by his picture in the station you think okay here here we go um, so that's made a huge impact um, I think people definitely think twice before they do a lot of things and it's brought about some training for us um, it's brought a lot of guys closer. Um, you know, we those that are on the department right now, there's a huge common bond that either before or after, they don't have that to share. Um, so it's definitely kind of brought the, the brotherhood a little bit, little bit close, closer and tighter. And One of the things that I posted on Facebook shortly after was that, you know, anybody that Bruce was just a great all-around guy, and any kid, any person growing up would that type of role model to have because it was the chivalry, and it was the cowboy, and it was the, this is the what, I call it the why factor, this is what the why factor is about, you know, and, um, but just having somebody like that and just wishing that we could have been closer and that my kids could have known him the way that, that you know, the 4-H kids and the, the camp kids and, and stuff like, so it's, living up, people seeing him, seeing who he is and what he is, and um, I guess trying to be, you know, trying to be.